All right, Scouts, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about some basic components of a first aid kit. First thing I wanna show you are some really simple rubber gloves. Rubber gloves are always, always worthwhile to have in your first aid kit, especially if uh, you're treating anyone that has some bodily fluids exposed, such as blood or saliva, that protects you from any diseases they may have, keeps your hands nice and clean without getting any of the fluids on them. So rubber gloves, always good to have in your first aid kit. For uh, basic wounds, sometimes you're out in the woods and it's difficult to come across soap and water, always helpful to have some alcohol wipes. Uh, this can help clean up a wound. Might sting a little bit, but it'll clean up a wound when you don't have uh, traditional soap and water nearby. Also for those small cuts and scrapes, never hurts to have an assortment of different types of band-aids handy. So here you can see I've got some small ones, some large ones, uh, one for every occasion. And I've got some regular sized ones as well. Uh, obviously band-aids are one of the staples that you wanna keep in your first aid kit. As, yours putting, as you are putting yours together at home. <clears throat> for wounds that are a little bit larger, that say a Band-Aid isn't quite, quite large enough for, having some gauze. Uh, gauze are basically square cotton, uh, pieces of cotton that you can put on larger cuts. You can see I've got a couple of different sizes here. Now, these are usually pretty good about not sticking to the wound itself. And when it's time to kind of close it down, you can also use some medical tape to hold it together and on the person's body. So medical tape, another one of those items that you wanna have in your first aid kit. If the wound is a little bit too large or you need to wrap around somebody's finger, wrist, arm, uh, you can also have what's called rolled gauze. So this is basically the same thing that's in this package, it's just in a roll. So if you needed to wrap it around someone's arm, you could use this. Again, this is called rolled gauze. For other things like tick bites, splinters, things like that, I usually try to carry a small pair of tweezers in my first aid kit. This makes it really handy because you never know when you're gonna get that tick bite or a splinter and you need to remove it while you're out hiking or camping. So tweezers, always a good idea. Along those same lines, a couple of Q-tips. Q-tips are never a bad idea to have in your first aid kit. And they can be quite helpful as well. Another thing that we haven't really talked about too much so far is something called mole skin. Mole skin would be used for blisters. We're gonna talk about that uh, tonight. But mole skin is gonna be used for blisters as well. Also another handy thing to have in your first aid kit. And then last but not least, I usually try to keep what's called a instant cold compress in my first aid kit. A cold compress is something that uh, is it's just in this bag here. If I were to squeeze the bag or just kind of hit it, uh, somewhat hard, <clears throat> it'll release some chemicals inside of it and it's gonna get really cold uh, pretty quickly. This will be pretty helpful if somebody's injured themselves and we need to dull the pain, say, on their hand or their knee or something like that. A cold compress always comes in handy. So this is the components of a basic first aid kit. Clearly there's plenty more that, that can go into a first aid kit, uh, but these are some of the tools and supplies that you can have handy for your first basic first aid kit.